Do we trust our golf swings or are we practicing distrust? Let's tee it up. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Aaron Stewart with Data Access Golf, the podcast, with another episode on this Fred Shoemaker Friday. I am pumped about this show. One, it's going to be so short. So what you'll learn about Fred Shoemaker and his brilliance when it comes to teaching and coaching golf is that he will be talking along and you'll be trying to get it all. But it, it is like it's the proverbial drinking from a fire hose. There's just too much to take in all at once. And so you like you take notes um, like any time I've had a phone conversation or whatever um, you're taking feverish notes. You're always looking for the recording of it because there's so much that's just pouring out of him that is just like knee jerk, right? He's one of those guys that's, you know, forgotten more about golf than we'll ever learn, like collectively. And so it's just so fun to learn from somebody like that. And so again, I've gone back to this 45 minute conversation that I had with Fred Shoemaker and I've broken out two tiny little excerpts that I think are so powerful when it comes to learning golf that I just wanted to break them out and, and just focus on these two little, these two little snippets um, because they are gold, baby. I mean, this is real amazing stuff. This will change the way you learn golf. This will change the way you approach golf. Okay. Just this little tiny show. And then we will, you know, we will wrap ourselves around this and discuss it in a broader and and obviously, for me to process the stuff that Fred Shoemaker shit says, I have to go really, really simple because I'm just not that smart. So I break it down into tiny little bits and pieces to finally start understanding. And it was really helpful for me as I tried to share with my kids growing up what Fred was talking about. I had to find really crazy, simple ways to explain it to, to him. And so I will continue to do that on data access golf so we can all understand it better. But this first little quote, this first little bit that I am going to play for you is about the difference between um, playing golf and controlling your golf swing. Okay, and just, I'm gonna play this and I'm, I may play it twice, I don't know, but it is so amazing. Just this, the, Just listen to him break this down, right? And about how to, um, geez, how do you put it? How to, oh, geez, to be a good player. Good players approach golf differently. Good players go to the tee with a completely different understanding of their golf swing than we amateurs do. And once we can make that mind shift, things will, things will change for us. Things will get different we'll play differently and we'll play better. So let me play that right now. It's super short. I mean, it's like, I don't know, just a couple seconds and we'll come back on the other side of it. People who play well walk to the first tee with the etching of the experience in their body and not the memory of the instruction in their head. Okay, so yeah, right? So here we go. Okay, I've actually typed this out. I'm actually gonna do some sort of a graphic and put it up on my Instagram feed because this, this is insanely good and so concise. Okay, so I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna go real, I'm gonna go real slow here. Okay. So accomplished golfers, I think, I think Fred said good players, but accomplished golfers walk to the first tee with the etching of the experience in their body. Right? So good golfers experience their golf swing. And that's how they know their golf swing, right? This, this experience of the golf swing, the motion, they're aware of how everything moves and it's an experience. That's how good players play golf, okay? And then he goes on and says this, and not the memory of the instruction in their heads. Okay, so how many of us, 
are on the tee with a pro and they're telling us all this kind of stuff and we write it down and then we've got this like this list of stuff that we do, right? This great big full head of crap, this checklist that we go through as we prepare to hit a golf shot. What are we doing? We're not playing golf. We're consciously trying to control golf and try to control our golf swings. It's crap. It's a horrible way to play. It'd be like trying to consciously control walking from here to, you know, the restroom or to get a drink or whatever. Like trying to really plan your steps or trying to consciously control how to drink from your, you know, from a cup. Like controlling your throat and all. I mean, what? But, but most of us amateurs, that's what we try to do with a golf swing. We're totally fine. We completely are fine, right? When the experience of, of drinking something is etched in us, when we pull the cup up to our mouth and we start to drink, we just let it happen. We do not consciously try to control the th muscles in our throat or any of that. Make sure it goes down the right pipe or whatever, okay? When we do, I think that's when we choke. When it goes down the wrong pipe, I think we're thinking about it. Right? We mess up the whole system. Okay. But when we play golf and we just are going with the etched experience of our golf swing and how it happens, just like when we, when we swallow something, when we're drinking something, as opposed to trying to consciously control something, now we've moved over to this opportunity to become a good player, a consistently good player. Because we've tapped into the experience. We understand it. We trust it. We're hanging out with it. Okay. So that brings up this next little portion of Fred Shoemaker. It's a little bit longer, but it's still super, super short. And in, in this little section, Fred talks about how when we practice, most of us, most amateurs, when we go out and practice, we are doing it completely in the wrong manner. It's fascinating to think about. And I've never heard anybody else say it like this. So I'm just going to play this little snippet again. So Fred Shoemaker on trust in the golf swing, and then we'll pick it up on the other side. So here we go. And you don't have to remember so much. I mean, if you, if you just look at it logically, if I'm on a range trying to make sure that I get a full turn. So it's, it's actually, if I say I need to make a full turn, it's an expression of distrust that I can make a full turn unless I think about it. So right. just seconds before I hit, I am exhibiting lack of trust. And everybody knows that trust is valuable, but very few people realize that they're actually practicing the opposite of it. So mm -hmm. what would be to, when you actually trust something, I mean, trust is to assume the reliability without trying to control it consciously. And that's what we were doing. We were engaging in an act of trust with you to see how reliable you are when you don't try to control things. What? <laughs> Is that awesome? Okay. So, have you ever thought about that? When we go to the range and we are trying to make our bodies do stuff, we're trying to make sure we stay on the inside of our back foot, or we're trying to make sure we have a full shoulder turn, or our arms straight, our heads down. We're doing all this stuff to try to play better golf. And frankly, most of us don't know if we really need to be working on those things anyway, because we're not videoing, we're not using technology, we're not doing all the stuff that we need to do in order to make sure that those kinds of things are going on. We just read an article somewhere in Golf Digest and figured we better go out and do what Johnny Miller says we should do. Um, and I love Johnny. But um, right, we're just trying to make ourselves do these things. We are practicing distrust. <laughs> what? We are practicing distrust. Okay. So when we say, when we hear people tell us, hey, you know, trust it, trust it. Oh, that's great. Awesome advice. But then we start running through a checklist and we're trying to make sure we have a full shoulder turn and, and we're balanced and, and, you know, we're our spine straight and we're thinking about all this stuff consciously. We have now made it very difficult for us 
to trust anything. We are getting really, really good and practicing distrust. Practicing that we don't think we have any idea how to get a golf, hit a golf ball unless we try to control it consciously. And that hurts our games, right? Trust is important, and yet we're practicing distrust. So can we go to a range and just explore and have fun and hit balls and try to etch the experience of our golf swings in our minds as opposed to trying to consciously make ourselves do something when we really don't need to be doing anything at all. We just need to be allowing whatever we've got inside of us to come out and express itself naturally. S super deep stuff from Fred Shoemaker. We have got tons to talk about. I'm so excited. I can't believe we've moved into season two. Um, if you would have told me a year ago, and it, it, again, I started in October, so it wasn't a full year. But if you told me I'd make it this long, I would have told you you're crazy. But golf is just that cool, and golf has just that much to talk about. And I do think that without Fred Shoemaker's um, tapestry of, of, of you know, golf instruction and, and being involved in that for the last 12 years of my life, I don't know if it would be possible to find golf this exhilarating, this interesting, this powerful. So much thanks to Fred Shoemaker and Extraordinary Golf, as always. Um, many thanks to all of you that listen and pay attention to Data Access Golf. I was so shocked after that podcast audit that there are so many of you that are actually listening. And so I must, from, from the bottom of my heart, say thank you. Um, some of you reach out and make comments, but it turns out a lot more of you are listening than I ever thought possible. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I say thanks. And just to know that you're there... When I saw that number and I realized that some people were paying attention, it kind of changed everything for me. Uh, I went through this change of, of having that conversation with Fred Shoemaker and going through a bunch of stuff and, and learning and realizing now that people are actually listening and interested in how we are learning and, and coaching and, and trying to become better golfers and that people are paying attention to the benchmarks and paying attention to how we play and how we focus and how we try to be different and how we try to work on our games inside and, and how we try to make sure that we use our time most effectively so we can play this great game in the best possible manner and make it work for us. Um, it's been super inspiring. So I thank all of you. Please um, join our Facebook group. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff going on in there that I've got planned out. There's going to be a lot of equipment reviews. There's going to be a, a live, especially for you in there. All of the data access, the data Monday stuff that we do, we'll have it a week um, on our Facebook page, just the general page, but then it's going to be moved into the private group and everybody else on Facebook isn't going to have access to that. Only those that have decided to join the group. Now the group is going to be, um, it's, it's a group that's made for specific individuals, those that are over the age of 30. Those that have, you know, don't have full time, don't have the ability to work on their golf games full time because, uh, you know, we do other things. You know, we have uh, lives that we have to live that demand our time and our focus where we can't be on the golf course 24 seven because we're going to talk about being efficient in our practice. That's going to be a big focus going forward. And then no golf professionals. This uh, Facebook group, Data Access Golf Private Club, is really, it's for amateurs. That's where amateurs are going to talk about it. And we are going to focus on all the things that we can do to make ourselves better. And, I, and, and we're going to approach it as amateurs. We're not going to get wrapped up in all the stuff that, that pros do. I, I don't believe that there's much help coming from a tour playing pro when they're talking to us about their games because they are experiencing their experiences etched inside of them. And that will always occur to them differently than it occurs to us. Right. And, and because they have so much time to practice and all that, we have to do a better job of making sure that our swings are simplified and that we're making the most of our practice time. And that I'm going to be probably, I, I just think there's a lot of really bad touring pro. There's a really, a lot of really bad, uh, uh, pro golf swings out there. 
So following them and how they're doing things is not a good way to go. They have the time to overcome really poor technique. And I, I mean, I love Joaquin Newman and the big win that he had last week. But to drop your head that much in your golf swing is atrocious. And at my age, I would break my neck. It, it's not a good golf swing for me. And I think that he's going to have to change it. And now it is totally amazing that he has overcome that really, really horrible technique to be as good as he is. And he could say the same thing about, you know, Matthew Wolf. His golf swing is atrocious. I mean, that, that is not a natural golf swing. And yet he has, he is so amazing and so talented that he has overcome really horrible technique to be an amazing player. Um, but we're going to focus on things that are tried, true, proven, and natural. So one, we don't get injured. I've been suffering through so many injuries right now that that's just a big part of my focus. We, we've got to be able to, to learn to play golf where we don't get injured uh, because, man, it takes a long time to get over some of these injuries. Uh, a ruptured Achilles and tearing out my wrist, those are horrible. Those have been really bad. I'm probably going to get a bad back next, you know, knock on wood. Um, but anyway, those are the things that we're going to be focused on in, in, in season two, and I'm really looking forward to it. Again, thank you so much. I didn't expect to go this long. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, Data, this is Aaron Stewart from Data Access Golf, where we believe better data always means better golf. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com, and we'll see you on the next episode.